It is time for me to introduce you to the second principle, dexterity. How a mecha moves. How it communicates its movement. How nimble is it? How is it nimble? Is it absolute in movement? Or is it more flexible? And how is it absolute? Or how is it flexible? Is it a bodily dexterity and maneuverability? Or the core form dances and moves as a whole? Is it a limbic dexterity and maneuverability? Or the arms and legs, thrusters, hands and feet pivot and undulate? This aspect is so wholly embodied inside Mecha. Planes can move their flaps and might have variable geometry. Ships and submarines are in comparison stiff and very absolute in their forms. It gives them a kind of strength to see them plow through the waves, but it is not dexterous. Cars and land vehicles may open spoilers or be flowing in their overall design. They can be nimble, as with Formula One cars, or they can be strong and absolute, as with tanks. But neither is truly dexterous. The only machine which even comes close are construction, forestry, and mining vehicles. With their huge arms and specialized tools for digging, cutting and stripping, clawing and pushing. But as you can tell by now, none come so close. None are so full-bodied in their limbic and core dexterity as Mecha. And this is true for non-humanoid machines as well. Evocative of animals or other organisms able to shape and form their bodies elegantly or powerfully. But of course, only the humanoid versions so enticingly capture the sensory reality of our bodies as we know them in real life. Only the humanoid mecha can make us feel that the machine feels like us. Or perhaps beyond. But now, I must abruptly say, halt. I'm sure you are wondering why I stopped the kinesthetic and flowing pace of my own video. To answer why, it is because this video is very important in teaching you something in particular. As we are now moving on to dexterity, the second principle, I need to enforce not just that, but the relationship it has to the first principle that I laid out previously, and perhaps to the future relationship to the principle I have not yet gotten to. I've seen a few comments which I find a bit worrying and I feel now is the best time to address them. Now I could perhaps continue this video series very casually, highlighting certain trends, and you would enjoy lapping it up in a synesthetic euphoria. And it might even be fun for both of us. But you need to understand this next part in order to get Mecha. To explain what I need to explain, I'll use a bit of rhetoric. If I were to ask you, hypothetically, what is the relationship between the three principles I laid out? Mass, dexterity, and energy. What would you say? Oh, well, um, okay, Argonbolt, there's, uh, there's three aspects, I guess, right? So, so maybe there's, like, three groups of mecha. Heavy, uh, fast, and, and powerful, maybe? This is an easy starting point, but it's also blatantly false. Let's try again. Uh, uh, okay, um, so, well, you showed us a video on, uh, like, heavyweight mecha, and you showed us the video on, you know, the, the fast mecha, so, maybe it works like this. Each aspect is, is an option, so, I don't know, maybe there's fast and slow, uh, dexterous and stiff, or something? And I would say that you're getting better. Understanding each aspect has many expressions it can take. But no, it's still false. The aspects are being looked at too separately, so this approach is also incorrect. So let's try again. Er, er, okay, well, if each aspect can be expressed in a mecha, maybe you could treat each aspect as a kind of axis, and try and put the three of them on some kind of graph. Yeah, that, that kind of makes sense. And then, you know, each mecha is kind of, you know, you, you put that in a graph. To this, I would say, good you're getting closer. Seeing that the three are interrelated. But alas, I must now pull back the curtains and tell you, this TV Tropes approach of resoundingly more asininely specific classification will not work here. To show you why it doesn't work, and why adding even more specifics won't help, imagine for a moment we're not talking about Mecha. Instead, let's imagine that this series is talking about real-life machines. 
And let's say that we have three machines as an example. A blimp, a helicopter, and a motorcycle. And now, imagine we try to use this approach. Say instead with speed, weight, and size. You would quickly see how absurd trying to define a machine based on the simplified parameters is. The blimp is absolutely massive, but it's technically lighter than either the helicopter or motorcycle. The motorcycle is tiny and can be very fast indeed, but the helicopter is faster. Yet the helicopter is the heaviest thing in weight, despite being only somewhat larger than the motorcycle, and tiny in comparison to the blimp. And I know, there's a part of your brain, and even maybe a part of my brain, that screams, but surely, if we just added more axis, Surely, if we just reworked the definitions, surely we could define and compartmentalize and categorize and shove into little boxes all the things on God's green earth and... Stop. The reality is that, well, yes, you can define aspects of machines using these kinds of simplifications. You cannot get to the heart of the machine this way. Real life machines don't exist the way they do because of definitions. The laws of physics exist in a certain manner, and at points where certain physical principles emerge, a machine can emerge that takes advantage of those principles. A train is not simply a train because of a definition. A train can be a train because of the way friction emerges as a property of steel against steel, and how it's very slippery. And yet a train, without any of that, can use magnets and fly across the lands of mankind while effectively touching nothing at all. A zeppelin can use buoyancy in the air, and a submarine can use similar principles underwater. Yet an airship must keep its insides in, while a submarine must most definitely keep its outsides out. It must abide by naval architecture, which is even more rigorous than for surface ships. A plane can fly by combusting forces of chemical power, or by the mechanical force of pushing air with propellers, or by raw nuclear heating and energy. All that diversity simply to apply thrust. That's not even touching on how many wing shapes, control surface layouts, and aerodynamic effects can be taken advantage of. And so I'm sorry, viewer. I know you might just think, I clicked on a video about Mecha. I just want to see someone tell me the genre of shows I like is cool, to some nicely timed music, and cool highlight clips. But think. If real machines exist as the emergent, beautiful forms from the fabric of reality, of real life, hard and expensive and unforgiving, lethal if not respected, and difficult to master and grapple with, then what of fiction? What of mecha? If real life machines have to obey and emerge from the laws of physics, then what about the machines that do not have to obey those rules? What about machines emerging instead from the human mind? Do you see now how absurd it is to try and define these machines so absolutely? It's like trying to define the limits of the human soul. Do you see now? See how absurd trying to define machines based on simplified parameters is. And that I've not given you definitions, merely general patterns, feelings, and sensations. The principles of Mecha, not hard definitions. Notice how Jehuti is lightning fast and rapid. When Jehuti attacks the dexterity of the blade and arm launching out, but yet in contrast, see how arrogant and elitist Anubis is in its body language. Arms folded in, its dexterity saying, who are you to even approach me? I can fight you with no exertion, like a haughty martial arts master. G Gundam's machines move as well like martial arts masters, like Wuxia, their dexterity surges, but is bound by certain grace and a certain approach. The Votoms dances and drives exactly like a fighting ski trooper. Like the army jeeps it was kitbashed from, it pivots and it's nimble. And see Giant Robo. Each punch is filled with mass, but notice how absolute the limbic dexterity. A single punch like a freight train landing. Yet at the climax of its battle, it can use its powerful rocket thruster. Do you see? The mass is considered the core dexterity of the energy needed to move its form. Mass and dexterity are interrelated in their expression. The mass dictates the implied weight and momentum of the machine, and the dexterity, how the form of that mecha moves and flows with that mass in mind. 
That moment in real life when you sprint and you can feel the mass of your own body as you sweat and breathe, but at the same time, that same mass in muscles and bones giving you the strength to run, to punch, to leap. Because mecha are humanoid, or have limbs, arms, and so on, they can express the sensation unlike other machines. So do you see? People disliked MS Igloo, yet the seemingly whiplash movement of its suits and thrusters exert the very same limbic ambac motion that Gundam has always mentioned but never normally uses. Because mecha exist in the realm of the imagination, they are even further unleashed. Their mass can be adjusted and manipulated. Their dexterity can exceed either the human or mechanical, disembody themselves and do things we can feel but exist beyond our mortal form. And there are so many different possible expressions, so many different styles to use. Metal Gear Rex and Metal Gear Ray move with the primeval power of Theropoda, but this core in limbic dexterity is coded in the missiles, vulcans, and railguns of machines. Mobile armors can be graceful and almost monstrous in their form compared to the mobile suits, yet they evoke and express dexterity in so many wonderful ways. The LFOs move and cut through the skies, the obvious nature of a calm surfer. But when transformed, they appear as Formula One cars. The dexterity of the machine ushers in transformation, to change shape and existence. See how the variable fighters dance through the skies, their body language and core limbic dexterity locked and tense. It is the body language of jet fighters in human form, always fighting for the right killing angle on the enemy whether as a plane or in human shape. And in combination, Gatai, docking and combining, a mechanical transmutation occurs, aquatic to aerial, or from the many into one, to usher in new power. Galgaigar, with singular focus tension, builds up to massive attacks. Once more, the limbic dexterity is powerful and absolute. The open Buddhist palm of protectal shape the plunging energy of the dividing driver. The ACs of Armored Corps are human in shape, but espouse mechanical lock-ons and weapons fire, only partially moving and walking like humans at slower speeds, or lunging with swords at close range. Its core dexterity is human, but that speaks more so to the power and elegance of the machine going even further. The Evangelion units are mechanical and artificial in nature, but exert themselves with the musculature and movement of a human, pushing forward to use the power and might of Olympic champions. Its core dexterity is flexible and dynamic, but that invokes instead the power of the human form. This is the beauty of Mecha. It is the dexterity of the human form given to machines. It is the mechanical power and ability of machines given to human dexterity and movement.